Hello, my soccer universe. Well, 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 the Champions League has us back and there were quite the results in there. A uh, very quick summary. English teams, almost perfect. Italian teams, almost perfect. And especially Madrid teams, a shambles. I think this is the quick uh, rundown from this Champions League and of course um, we have still that the favorites are the favorites with Bayern Munich completely asserting themselves. I decided to wear Lazio. I actually was almost going with Atalanta but then I said ah, no, they have a good spot here on the wall uh, kind of you know showing that even um, not so fancy Italian team can actually do something uh, in this round and they got a rather big victory themselves. I would say we run a little bit. I saw pretty much every game because I was watching uh, the Champions League conference uh, the last two to two days with a switch back and forth so maybe I have not uh, seen all the games per se but I got a feeling I saw all the goals and all that kind of stuff. Let's start uh, in the East, because uh, all the Russian Ukrainian teams typically get an early kickoff, which I, I actually think is nice uh, to have them. And then it started at home to Club Rouge, uh, to a big audience, I think around 20,000 or something, something like that. But Club Rouge came out to play and was uh, quite well in the game. They get the goal. It was not necessarily against the run of play. They were uh, outsiders, but Dennis, um, in the 63rd, then Zenit kind of the honor, and I have to say, nice Zenit jerseys, really, really nice jerseys come out. Um, wanna go for for the equalizer, they get it when Lovren uh, launches a shot that hits, I think, the post and then the back of the Horvath, the goalie, and it goes into the net 1 1. Zenit tries to get uh, the winner. But gets caught on the counter in stoppage time, and the Cataleri after form assist makes it 2 1 for Bruges, the first upset, if you want, um, in this is Champions League. Then Juventus shows up at Dynamo Kiev in orange with black. Yeah, great choice. If you want to have the Kiev fans totally against you, that was the way to do it. Uh, so you were playing in a psychedelic Schachter kit, I have to say. Um, but Juventus actually. Not that they were super convincing, but they were the better team uh, throughout. Uh, Chiellini probably should have made it already won it in the first half. It then fell to Morata, who can pull it in from close range after Kulusevski assist in the 46th. And that basically settled the game already. Morata gets a late um, second goal. But this was actually quite convincing by Juventus, more than I would have expected from them. We don't need to talk much about Chelsea Sevilla because there was not much. This was a horrible game. One, you know, everyone said, yeah, this is gonna be great because Chelsea is leaking goals and scoring goals, and Sevilla also. No, uh, I'm actually not that surprised, although I also was kind of hyping myself up for that. But have you seen how Sevilla won the Europa League? Uh, especially against Wolves, dominating possession, da 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 da, and then uh, hitting kind of on the counter attack. So, yeah, nil nil. Not illogical, uh, but you know, maybe Sevilla could have won it as well. Uh, in some ways, the game of the evening, I think this was the most entertaining game, was Rennes against Krasnodar. Um, I played in front of 9,000 spectators who mostly had masks, but you know, distance, nope, like that. Um, and was an open game with maybe slight advantage. Rennes, who uh, get a penalty in the second half, um, and VAR needed to take care of that one. Uh, Girasi, yeah, was hard work to get it past the goal. goalkeeper, makes it 1-0, and you think, yeah, Ren is now on the way, but just a few minutes later, Ramirez launches a shot, and it is in, and uh, Ren cannot find the winner, and both teams were actually going forward for, for the win. And the other thing, given that um, Grasender played against Park twice in dark jerseys, um, they have a white jersey as well, so yeah, you never know. But that was an, an entertaining match and nice background. Uh, entertaining, I also have to say, probably Lazio, because yes, they. I did not expect that. Uh, coming from them that they will roll over Dortmund like that. And it was the uh, Immobile's revenge, uh, you know, 
you more believe did not have a happy year at uh, Dort Dortmund. No one took him out for dinner and stuff like that. So yeah, uh, he or in a sixth minute got his his goal and celebrated. I was happy that he celebrated. You know, I I, I don't like this whole respect. You scored a goal, be happy. He didn't really rub it in as well. So I uh, was quite happy to 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 see that. Then um, Luis Felipe uh, makes makes a header that hits hits. He's credited with, with the own goal, but yeah, Lazio fully deserved to be 2 0 up at the time. Uh, maybe uh, could have added a third if they won it. Yes, Dortmund had chances, especially in the second half. Dortmund had, had the chances, but overall, I have to say, Lazio were the better team. And at 2 0, they went a little bit into um, you know management mode. Um, and that allowed Reina to assist Holland uh, with a thunderous shot. Uh, make it 2-1, typically Holland, but then Lazio turns it on again and Akpa Akpro after an uh, immobile assist and he just played in Serie B, makes it 3-1 and that settles the game and Lazio gets a well-deserved win. Um, probably if you watch the game, well-deserved was probably also Barcelona against Ferenc Varos, however Ferenc Varos had the bigger chances uh, in the first 30 minutes. They really came to play there. Uh, the pro yes, Barcelona had more of the uh, game as you would expect. But Ferenc Varos came came to play, and then it was one of those rare. Yeah, uh, is he allowed to do that? Messi moments. Uh, I mean, under Kuman, where he just goes goes around, cuts in, is brought down the box, and gets a penalty, which is um, converted. And so far, did not uh, shot shot thereafter makes it uh, two nil, and the game is settled. A game that actually was rather open up until uh, that point. Continue with with the third, and you think the route is on, but then uh, Gerard Piquet has a blackout. He could have let the uh, Hungarian attacker go through. No, he needs to pull on the shirt. Last man gets himself stupidly sent off, and he's missing now, of course the next game, which will talk in a sec. Um, and so Karatin can pull uh, one back, but late on. Pedri, really nice uh, goal, and also the Usman Dembele. I thought he's not allowed to play for Barca anymore. <laughs> uh, add two more, and it's the 5 1 that one would expect, but it was not all that easy. It was rather stupid, I have to say, what Gerard Piquet did. Everything but expected was PSG against United. Uh, also for me, everything but, but expected was that this is a wonderful jersey matchup. I really do not dislike those United shirts. And it, actually, I mean, if I see they can they cannot play in red at PSG, they cannot really play um, given the red uh, um, that PSG have in their shirts now, fortunately. And they cannot really uh, play with their darkish churches. So that, that makes sense. Um, it was United got uh, maybe at the onset a surprising win, but if I don't know anything about United, if they can sit deep and defend deep, they are good. And PSG having their uh, troubles uh, with Kirk currently with many um, players out or not fit, or really um, United really played into the you know. It played into the strengths of United seeing deep hitting them on the count counter attack. The penalty maybe was a little bit lucky, and yes, PSG had had some chances, but you know Bruno Fernandes uh, steps up. First, it is saved by uh, but by um, what's his name Navas, but he's clearly off the line, and then Fernandes goes in the same corner again, and yeah, uh, one nil for United. Um, in the second half, PSG comes back. We cannot lose that first for first, first game, but it's again a Parisian who scores. Uh, it's a Parisian who scores the equalizer, uh, but it's one playing for United and Martial on goal. Um, and but still, it is then United that gets the late win. PSG is trying to go forward, but you know when you when, when you see who who they brought on, uh, Doug Bass, uh, Beck Bucker. I mean those are names that you wouldn't really expect, and so I wasn't and Moise Ken. And I mean United gets a huge win in Paris to start the campaign, and Paris cannot exercise their demons from uh, two seasons ago.
when they were eliminated by United. But maybe let's see how it, how it, how it will go in the return leg. And then Leipzig, a rather easy win over Bajakshi here, where they probably had to stay more concentrated to not be caught on the count, 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 count attack. But uh, it was just all Leipzig in that one. But just a really bad jersey matchup. I also have to say, Angelino gets both goals in the 16th and 20th. And then they hang on, and Bajakshi here is, if not the worst, very close to the bottom of being one of the worst teams. Let's look at the Wednesday action. Salzburg, I have to say, a rather disappointing, but maybe overall they deserve it 2 2 draw. I mean, Lok Moscow for the first 30 minutes for sure uh, was the better team there and got um, deserved a goal through Eder, the guy who got the winner in the um, Euro final 2016. Uh, because Sal Sal Salzburg in midfield uh, played the right, right cards of Locke. Once they put the midfield di diamond, it worked better. And Soboschlei actually gets with a great shot. A, that, that was one of the best goals. Uh, gets the equalizer in the 45th. And then Salzburg thought they had them on the ropes and get actually the uh, second goal through Junusovic in the 50th. At that time, maybe a little bit lucky, but then Salzburg is pressing to get the third one, but they can, cannot get it. And uh, uh, caught really, really defensively out of position. And then if your goalkeeper Stankovic, uh, I, have to, I, don't, I don't know, this guy that he ever was considered by Austria's top goalie, I don't get, get it, but so Lizakovic has it in and Stankovic has his hand there and puts it in, 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 in his own net. Uh, late Patzen Daka, who is scoring freely in Austria, cannot do that in the Champions League and misses a big chance. And it's a rather disappointing 2 2 draw, I have to say. I Yes, it's the Russian League, uh, probably a little bit better than the Austrian League, but I think Salzburg is a team that should beat Lok at home. Uh, absolutely has to be said that way. So this was rather disappointing. Uh, and if you're a Real Madrid fan, I think you're hiding under a rock at the moment. Uh, Shakhtar Donetsk has 13 players out with COVID. I mean, are not all first team players. And they show up at the uh, Stadio Alfredo Di Stefano, which to me, it is just not a Champions League crowd, but okay. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, there is a certain anachronism that I like about it. I have, I have, I have to say, when you see a champ, Champions League game and then in the background you see the landscape and, and so on, but uh, sweet. Schachter came out to play. Schachter dominated Real Madrid. Real Madrid was a, a shadow. I mean, other than the crest, you would not think this is Real, Real Madrid. The way Schachter played. I mean, the goal by Tete, he basically runs through the entire defense and can uh, pull, pull, pull it in. Yes, Sergio Ramos is missing. And, and may, maybe that, that's testament to Sergio Ramos's greatness. That when he's not playing, Rafael Varane cannot pull the defense out. And then if Eda Militao in there, it's crazy. Speaking of Varane, uh, he tries to save a bad situation by pulling a ball in his own net. And then Solomon in the 42nd makes it 3 deal. 3 deal at the half. Uh, if I was Zidane, I don't know what he did, I would be livid at halftime. I mean, uh, you had already a bad showing against Cadiz, and then you have this showing against a depleted Shakhtar Donetsk side. I'm sorry. And nothing against Shakhtar, we know that Shakhtar Donetsk can play well. And they, with some luck and a good draw, well, well, they were are always a can 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 to make it in the top 16, maybe just on the bubble there. But yeah, seemingly uh, something has to be said because in the 54th and 59th, Real Madrid put two goals back uh, through Modric and Vinicius. But then again, not much coming. And yes, also, Zidane needs to be blamed because he did not play his first ring squad because the classic of misery is coming up. And so he didn't play uh, the Bons and Mars, the, um, the Modric's and, and so on. Uh, it was kind of, especially in front, a kind, a kind of timid uh, matchup. But when Bons and Mar came on, uh, you could see there was already a shift in play. However, they cannot find the equalizer. Well, not quite. They get the equalizer, but it's so clearly offside because there are two 
players, and especially Vinicius uh, Junior, in there who just block everything. Uh, Vinicius Junior came on for Ante, uh, for Luka Jovic, uh, who whenever jo jo Jovic is playing, I have the feeling that you can already say, tell that Zidane is not taking it seriously. Uh, absolute disaster. Bravo, Schachter. But absolute disaster. And the other Madrid team, also absolute disaster. First of all, the jerseys. What was Atletico playing in? I mean, I every time they switched to the Bayern uh, uh, Atletico game, I almost had to turn my eyes away because I could not stand those Atletico shirts. They were really... Uh, Whoever came up with that idea should be too, totally fired. Um, the defenses held on for uh, a while. Uh, there were half chances, but once Bayern found the breakthrough through Coman, it was all gone. Goretzka then adds a second. And Atletico ran into a route. Yeah, Joao Felice put one uh, back, but again, similar to the Real Madrid goal, there was someone, and Neuer immediately said, no, no, this has to be offside. Uh, was taken take away and then to listen command uh, with another one make it 4-0 and this was every bit of 4-0 as it should be there and uh, poor uh, Jan Oblak because he was not happy with the way things were going uh, not happy probably is Inter because it Inter dominated proceedings most of the time and I think he twice the post but Gladbach is one of those pesky teams that always can hit you a little bit. I mean, Lukaku gets the first, first, first goal. In a typically Inter uh, attacking flurry where they just don't give up and put the ball in. And then they really want to get for the second. But uh, Gladbach gets a break when a penalty. But Vidal, I mean, an absolute 100% stonewall penalty that the referee didn't see. But fortunately, we have VAR. And so it is 1-1. Uh, after Ben Zemaini uh, converts that panel penalty. Inter pushing forward. Um, Martinez is coming on. Came already on at half. Half, half time. Hits the post. And then uh, going on the other side. Uh, Neuhaus assists Hofmann. And fortunately there was no touch for it Because otherwise it would be a bit of sight. I mean for uh, Gladbach. Uh, and in the 84th Gladbach leads 2-1. Totally against the run of play, and I think uh, Luke Lukaku said, "Nah, this can't kind of be." And after Bastoni, he just uh, corner, he just slams it home from a short range. Um, probably they could have found the winner because of a long stop stoppage time, but it ends two two. I have to say, for Inter, definitely points dropped. Um, City had a lot of trouble with Porto, who actually took the lead after a nice solo by Luis Diaz. Uh, pull, pull to the net, but a few minutes later, uh, and this was for me kind of contentious. Um, a penalty is given, yes, what Pepe is doing on Raheem Sterling is probably a foul, but there was in the build up to, to, to that, uh, Gundogan is stepping on the goalkeeper. Yes, it's not on purpose, but uh, I still think it's a foul, especially uh, the way he went on there. I thought this, I would have given the foul there, but yeah, Aguero steps, steps up. Again, goalie is all, almost there. It's 1-1. But Porto actually uh, enjoying quite a bit of the, of, of the game and had actually chances to make it 2-1. Uh, the game turns on another contentious free kick that Gündogan wonderfully puts in. And then uh, Foden and Ferran Torres uh, come on in 68. And five minutes later, they combine for the third goal. I think that in the end, City probably deserved the win. But uh, the first half, I think Porto was the better team. Uh, rather even game, slight advantage, I think Olympiacos um, ends with a late goal through Coca after Valbuena assist for uh, Pireos over Marseille. Uh, the Marseillais will be definitely uh, disappointed with that. That one to not get, get a draw out of, of, of that one. Then probably one of the more entertaining games on with only one goal scored. Ajax really came to play against Liverpool and both teams. I mean, it was going up, down, up, down, up, down uh, whenever I saw. But it was mostly Ajax who really had uh, great chances and you could see the attacking play was always nice to watch. It was more Ajax, uh, where Quincy Promise had a huge chance and then right on the back, Sad Sadamene gets once off his defender, takes a shot that's deflected by Blind and then by Telefico in the on goal. That's stung. I mean, it was a little bit how we are almost used to Ajax and Ajax has more chances. 
is the better game. I think uh, they, David Klaassen once hit the post and so on. Ajax probably would have deserved an equalizer, but Liverpool hangs on for, to a vital win. And then the story of last season, Atalanta in the driving Danish rain. Uh, turn it on in the first half and do Atalanta things. Yes, there were a few chances from Gilland, but uh, Zabata. Uh, scores the first the first one after typically Atalanta attacking move then Papo Gomez takes a long range shot also typically Papo goal uh, Muriel slams it in from short range uh, make it 3-0 and that settles the game lay, lay it on Miranchuk after Ilicic assist makes it 4-0 for Atalanta so yeah this gives us now the following standings lots of action there uh, we go through groups A through uh, H Bayern now clearly in the driving uh, seat there. Uh, Lok actually still not uh, being favored a lot here, but I'm at least in second spot now. Uh, Salzburg, as I said, is his drop points uh, and probably Atletico and Coco Madrid can uh, win the other two games. Schacht a huge win for them. That puts them now in pole position to actually uh, advance, according to my model. As I said, I'm not so sold on it, but I actually want to keep it because you should not use this data for betting. Uh, Inter second and Real Madrid at the moment only a third of advancing out of this group. Uh, yep, probably. Uh, not that inaccurate there. Uh, City now dom dominant that group and Olympiacos with a huge win. Uh, we have to see how they will do against Porto. Uh, group D, two big away wins, uh, which basically will, almost you want to say, will settle the group Atalanta and Liverpool. Uh, it really now depends on if Ajax can do anything against At Atalanta, but I honestly have to say I would favor Atalanta in that one as well. Um, group uh, E, a little bit funny standings. I mean, all on uh, one point, but you see that the two favorites are not down and this is only the to goal difference. But yeah, if you don't take points off each other, yeah, that's how it goes. Group F now a uh, toss up. I mean, everything around 55% or uh, a little bit more of uh, advancing. Lazio, Club Bruges, Borussia Dortmund, Zenit is the one that um, is looking down and out. Barca, Juve, more or less uh, asserting their favorite status. And then another toughish group where PSG now suddenly look out of sorts here. So I found that uh, kind of interesting as well. And uh, there on the bottom here. Uh, so when we look here at the favorites, not much uh, changing up top, but then if you go further down, um, we, Real Madrid made a huge drop down, uh, but Bayern, of course, Bayern City, Barbara, the Guardiola trio is up top, and then uh, Liverpool is also there. PSG just hanging in still, uh, I think, the quality of the squad, but you know, United is not on level with them to win it. Juventus also makes an appearance up there. Next round, um, I have to say, when I look now at, I mean, Atalanta Ajax is probably the game to pick, but I think the Tuesday games, um, not all that exciting, although Schachter Inter, that could be already have quite some big implications as well. But I think it's all about Juventus Barcelona and the uh, Ronaldo Messi matchup that we won't get, honestly. Uh, other than that, United Leipzig, I think, could also be interesting there as well and we have to see whether PSG can hit back against Bajak Shahir or if Dortmund can get do anything against Zenit but I have, I have to say the first round was definitely more exciting than match day two. So that is my thoughts on the Champions League first day. Let me know what you watch, whether you agree with the assessment of the games that I just talked, talked about. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video, subscribe to my channel if you want to see more and I will talk to you soon. Bye! Hey there, I really hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you might enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and clicking the little bell icon so that you get, I get updated whenever something is happening in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day!